name of the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Good evening my viewer. How are you? I trust that you are well. Thank you so much for always keeping it perfect TV. And it is my belief that you are getting blessed with our various programs and I believe zinakujenga kiimani na unaendelea kuzidi kukua. And thank you so much for joining us once again tonight for the Youth Nation program. Here is where we come and discuss issues that are affecting the young people. Tuna make sure hapa tumetoka na solution. If not that, tuna make sure tumepata ways of navigating through uh, whatever these issues are. And today we are talking about uh, depression. Our statistics say that one in four they have had a mental illness. And as you have uh, been with us before, we have talked about mental illnesses. But today specifically we want to talk about depression. And we have our guests in studio tonight and he's going to introduce himself even as we proceed. Very good Sama. Thank you. Introduce yourself to our viewers tonight. Thank you so much. My name is John Moy Amanas and uh, um, thank you. Karibu sana John. Leo tunataka kuongea kuhusu depression. Yes. Hii ni story imekuwa ikiongelewa sana for the last many years I can say. Yes. And uh, if you can look at the statistics ni kitu imeenda ikiongezeka. Yes. And especially after Covid things now became even uh, worse. Yes. But I know uh, through all this kuna kuanga na solution. Na leo tunataka tupatie our viewer a solution whatever they're going through and uh, maybe educate them more when it comes to depression. Yes. And to start with, maybe we can just uh, define to us what exactly is a uh, depression. Thank you. Depression is a, a mental illness. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Yeah. It's a mental illness and the depression is one of the of the mood disorders. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are several types of mood disorders. Mm -hmm. Uh, depression being among them, okay. uh, and uh, and also the the bipolar, mm -hmm. the bipolar one, and also the bipolar two. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about mood. Mood is actually what you feel, mm -hmm. what what a person is feeling. Yeah. I might describe my mood as happy. I may say I'm angry, mm -hmm. but um, yes, or mm -hmm. or you're sad. Mm -hmm. So um, mood is what you're feeling. Yes. What you are expressing mm -hmm. is affect. Okay. So an expression of mood mm -hmm. is affect. What am I what I'm feeling mm -hmm. inside? You express I'm it. I'm expressing outside. it. Uh -huh. So that is affect. Mm -hmm. Now we have an example. Uh I may say I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So if I'm happy and I'm smiling or laughing, mm -hmm. then that is the laughing yes. is the affect. Uh -huh. And we can call that is a congruent affect. Mm -hmm. A congruent affect mm -hmm. is an affect that is directly proportional to the, what I'm feeling. feeling uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Sometimes affect can be incongruent. Mm -hmm. Incongruent means that uh, someone says they are they, they are happy, mm -hmm. but facial expression they are crying, mm -hmm. they are frowning. Mm -hmm. You see, so that is incongruent. Yeah. Some people portray no they portray no affect at all. They're just there. They, they, they're just there. So you can't they're tell whether they're happy you or not. Tell. <laughs> yes, that is flat affect. Uh -huh. and depression, according to the Diagnostic Statistical Manual mm -hmm. 5, uh, the DSM-5, mm -hmm. um, we say there are very various types of depression. Mm -hmm. Now we have a major depressive disorder. Okay. Uh, this is a clinical. Mm -hmm. There is a persistent depressive disorder. Mm -hmm. It is also called dysthymia. Mm -hmm. You can also call it dysthymia. We also have uh, another type of uh, depression called uh, premenstrual dysphoric depression, whereby this one happens to ladies mm -hmm. uh, before they, they, they experience their monthly periods, mm -hmm. around 14 days or so mm -hmm. to, to that day. So they have a series of mood swings, mm -hmm. they feel sad, they may, feel, they may even have uh, physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Uh, the other one, we may have depression mm -hmm. that is induced by maybe drug, uh, drug use or uh -huh. medicine-induced mm -hmm. depression. So that is uh, another type of depression. We also have a uh, specified and unspecified depression. Mm -hmm. yeah, so those are the various types of uh, depression. Ah, great. Yes. Yes. So ladies, if you're out there, so we should not say that we have never <laughs> been uh, depressed. Yes, yes, So it yes. is a type of depression. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, what are the signs and symptoms 
of uh, depression? Is there something that you can see and uh, just say this person is depressed? Is there something we can pick and tell that this person is uh, going through depression? Yes, sure. There are various signs and symptoms mm -hmm. uh, that you may look at and now and say now this person is uh, depressed. Mm -hmm. You say you, I cannot just look at you and start saying you are you are you are rather going under depression uh -huh. even in the hospitals when you come to the hospital mm -hmm. uh, we are going to do the mental status assessment mm -hmm. and then uh, then maybe observe you in uh, 72 hours uh -huh. now after, after observing you mm -hmm. now we are going to know that you deserve to be kept to be detained mm -hmm. or or maybe we can decide we discharge you depending on on, on the symptoms mm -hmm. or or how you are going to be within those 72, 72 hours, hours. Okay. so you cannot just look at a person and say now this person is depressed mm -hmm. so you have to know this person very well mm -hmm. you 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 have interacted with them mm -hmm. you know how they usually are yeah. and then you'll be able to say now this person has depression mm -hmm. now depression mm -hmm. is a feeling it's a it's a feeling of extreme sadness. Mm -hmm. It's it's very extreme. Yeah. It's extreme sadness mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, hopelessness. Mm -hmm. This person may even feel worthless, mm -hmm. and uh, they may have something we call anhedonia. Mm -hmm. Anhedonia is when uh, people do not enjoy, uh, they do not find pleasure in mm -hmm. previous pleasurable activities mm -hmm. or pre previous pleasurable things mm -hmm. that yeah, they, they used to do doing. yes mm -hmm. so maybe you love swimming or you love uh, soccer so you feel now you you don't want to watch soccer you don't want to play soccer you don't want to go swimming yeah. so that is what we term depression as and sometimes for you for us to say now this person uh, is having a, a major depression mm -hmm. it, these symptoms they have to to undergo over a period of at right. least two weeks oh. at least two weeks okay. uh, then there are those signs and symptoms mm -hmm. of depression mm -hmm. now one of the signs and symptoms of depression is a uh, sleep disturbances mm -hmm. now these people may have sleep disturbances in, in aspect of sometimes they may experience insomnia mm -hmm. now insomnia is a is a long period without sleep okay Yes, uh, or or sometimes they they wake up in the middle of the night and they find difficulties going back to sleep. Okay. Yeah, so that is what we call insomnia. insomnia. They may also experience long periods of sleep. Mm -hmm. They they sleeping a lot mm -hmm. or drowsiness. Okay. Something we call somnolence. Mm -hmm. You sleep a lot, or sometimes you you can call it hypersomnia. Mm -hmm. So that is sleeping a lot so that is number one the, the sleep disturbances mm -hmm. sometimes they may start uh, withdrawing okay. they may they withdraw themselves they they keep to themselves mm -hmm. they don't want to associate with other people mm -hmm. they don't talk a lot so just they, they they a person who was usually very social and uh, talkative and they are talking they are mm -hmm. here and there they start withdrawing they keep to themselves they lock themselves in the room yeah. long hours kept low, uh, locked they okay. don't talk in the social media mm -hmm. they are just there they just want they, their they, own they, space they, they are just alone uh -huh. yeah. now that is number two the other one they these people they have feelings of hopelessness mm -hmm. and worthlessness yeah. they feel that um they are not worth it mm -hmm. they, they feel hopeless mm -hmm. they don't even want to talk about tomorrow because they feel like tomorrow is is just going to be a day like today where yeah, I'm depressed. Yeah, and yeah so yes. Mm -hmm. So that is that is also one. The other one is a uh, psychomotor retardation mm -hmm. or simply sluggishness. Mm -hmm. So these people are uh, doing doing the the daily things is a problem. They are very slow. They are very slow. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, another sign of uh, of a depression. Mm -hmm. The other one is eating. So these people they have loss of appetite. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 they may have loss of appetite mm -hmm. or they may have a high appetite mm -hmm. whereby they eat a lot, they stress eating. They they end up getting uh, anorexia nervosa mm -hmm. or uh, or a bulimia nervosa. Mm -hmm. So that these is... are eating disorders. Uh -huh. So sometimes these are people who sometimes they restrict some food they don't want to eat mm -hmm. or sometimes this person eats and then induce vomiting mm -hmm. so these are eating disorder there's mm -hmm. a whole new topic about eating disorders okay. yeah so 
those are some of the signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. There is also something we call uh, delusions. Mm -hmm. Now delusions, these are beliefs that people have mm -hmm. and and, uh, and you cannot convince them Otherwise, contrary. Uh -huh. Now the, the, there are types of delusions. Now uh, we have uh, nihilistic delusions. Mm -hmm. Now nihilistic delusions, these are um, delusions and beliefs that people believe that they, they do not have certain parts of their body. Okay. Yes, they believe that they do not have certain parts of their body. How does that happen? And maybe an example, okay. you serve someone food and they start saying, now thank you, you have served me food, but now I cannot eat this, this food because I don't have a stomach. <laughs> yes, I don't have okay. a stomach. Where do you want this food to, to go, go to? Uh -huh. Yes, so that is one example of a nihilistic delusions. Mm -hmm. uh, there are also some other delusions called somatic, uh -huh. somatic delusions. Sometimes we refer to them as hypochondriacal delusions. Uh -huh. Now these are these delusions, people believe that a certain part of their body is dysfunctional. Uh -huh. Someone will, uh, will, will keep to their chair. They uh -huh. are going to sit there and moved. they are not moving. Uh -huh. And you ask them, why are you not moving? Then they are going to tell you that their legs are not functioning. <laughs> Yes, they are, they are, their legs are not functioning. How are they going to move from one place to and another? Their legs, so their legs that is, yes, the legs they, they cannot uh, move. Mm -hmm. So that is another example of delusion. Mm -hmm. uh, there is another delusion called delusions of jealousy. Mm -hmm. uh, these people believe that their spouses are cheating on them. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they even go to the extent of following the, their mm -hmm. spouses, mm -hmm. which of course is going to bring problems yeah. in, the, in the relationship. Yeah, because it's all a delusion. Yes, you, the wife is going to feel like you are stalking me. Mm -hmm. Why are you stalking me? And mm -hmm. it's going to bring issues. Definitely. Yes, um, another type of delusion is uh, the delusions of paranoid, mm -hmm. paranoid delusions. Mm -hmm. So these people, they, they, they feel like everybody is against them, like the world is conspiring against them. <laughs> yes, they feel like everybody is out there to get them. Uh -huh. They see you, they, in fact, you find someone walking and then see another one running and they, they, they turn and they start and they running. Run. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they start running. Uh -huh. So they, they feel like you have been sent to, mm, to, to maybe to them. harm them. Those are various types of... Uh, Mm -hmm. It falls under under thought content. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, hallucinations, mm -hmm. uh, types of hallucination. Okay. For example, we have the gustatory hallucination, mm -hmm. where people they taste things that are not there. Mm -hmm. Yes, you offer them food, and then they they say this food is something you have put in this food that's not supposed like to they be can there. feel a particular taste. Yes, okay. they feel mm -hmm. a particular taste. Mm -hmm. in the, in the, in the mouth mm -hmm. becomes a problem. There is also olfactory mm -hmm. hallucinations mm -hmm. whereby people they, they smell things that are not there. Okay. They, someone may smell maybe somewhere is burning. Mm -hmm. They ask you where, where, where is burning. <laughs> yeah, so the, another type of hallucination is uh, tactile. Mm -hmm. Tactile hallucinations are uh, you feel like there are insects that Thank are passing you, that, that are on your body and mm -hmm. then you see someone starts doing they, they, are, they, they want to be free of, of those insects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are, there are many types of hallucination, mm -hmm. uh, mostly, mostly uh, uh, that affect the five senses. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, that is so uh, informative. Now, let us look at uh, what are the risk factors that contribute to depression. Yes. Now, there are various uh, uh, factors mm -hmm. that contribute to depression. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when we talk about that, three words come into my mind. Mm -hmm. We talk about uh, predisposing factors, okay. we talk about precipitating factors, mm -hmm. and then we talk about perpetuating factors. Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about predisposing factors, mm -hmm. these are factors that you have them. Maybe it's your genetics. Okay. Genetics, uh, maybe you, you know they are familial tendencies mm -hmm. of people in that family, yeah. they, they, they develop mental illnesses mm -hmm. and it could be even depression mm -hmm. yeah so the other thing is about age mm -hmm. there's a certain age that mental illness or depression is prevalent okay. yes uh, around 30 to 40. Mm -hmm. so this is an age where people uh, have started now they have, they have moved from childhood and mm -hmm. now responsibilities are 
moving in yeah. is a lot of pressure mm -hmm. yes now there is a uh, another one gender mm -hmm. now um female are more likely to suffer depression yes. oh wow okay. yes female are more likely to suffer depression compared I, to men i thought because female talk more they are able to relieve uh, themselves from a uh, stress how is it that uh, they are more affected okay that is a statistic that is, is that is done eh? uh -huh. so female may, may may tend to suffer depression, depression. Okay. Co as compared to men. to men mm -hmm. but when it comes to suicide mm -hmm. male may commit suicide okay more compared to to ladies, to, to, to to ladies. Uh -huh. okay ladies ladies will will threaten mm -hmm. you will threaten to commit suicide mm -hmm. but they actually not going to, <laughs> to commit suicide <laughs> actually, but men will not talk about it and then they will they commit suicide uh -huh. yes yeah, so that is uh, the predisposing factors mm -hmm. and then we also have uh, the precipitating factors mm -hmm. and when you talk about the precipitating factors mm -hmm. these are factors that they they happen almost immediately before you develop an illness mm -hmm. the mental illness okay. maybe for example a divorce mm -hmm. maybe maybe you are married and now your relationship is having issues yeah. and then you get you it decide how oh, your spouse tells you want a divorce mm -hmm. so that psychological uh, stress mm -hmm. triggers mm -hmm. just like the way we have triggers of asthma you know you mm -hmm. might you might live with asthma but Not you have that. periods of yeah. uh, of uh, normal life and mm -hmm. everything but certain triggers mm -hmm. they, they they trigger you and you you get an episode mm -hmm. so the same same way the precipitating factors these are factors they trigger mm -hmm. they trigger you to to, de to 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 depression mm -hmm. an example is the, the divorce mm -hmm. you maybe a loss of a loved one mm -hmm. maybe someone died yeah. so you 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 feel you feel very sad and hopeless mm -hmm. maybe unemployment mm -hmm. is yeah. especially unemployment mm -hmm. is a big issue that is causing people to get sure. into depression mm. and employment mm. and and also especially the youth the frustration mm -hmm. uh a lot of stress because people are expecting a lot from you mm -hmm. and then uh and then we can also talk about bullying mm -hmm. the, the, there's a lot of bullying that 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 is happening especially mm. in the social media um uh people start talking about you yeah. maybe you are you are your physique mm. maybe your body yeah. If they start talking about how you dress, how you your shape, mm. your weight, and everything, mm -hmm. so you 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 tend to to get into depression. Yes. Now the other one uh, we we talk about is perpetuating factors. Mm -hmm. Now perpetuating factors these are factors that prolong mm -hmm. they prolong your mental illness. Okay. Yes. So if it's an illness, you can easily get a uh, cured off. Mm -hmm. Uh, within maybe a period of maybe one year, mm -hmm. so you end up even taking long, because number one you are lonely, okay. you are lonely because you don't have maybe a social support. Mm -hmm. There are things that they bring up problems mm -hmm. when, when it comes to mental health, mm -hmm. and the predisposing factors, the precipitating factors, and now the perpetuating factors they lengthen. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how can you say how prevalent is a uh, depression among the young people currently? Now, depression is 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 really a big problem, yes. and uh, talking of globally, mm -hmm. uh, there are around three hundred million. Mm -hmm. Imagine three hundred million mm -hmm. people who are suffering from depression yeah. globally. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a, a significant uh, number mm -hmm. that we should we should not only start considering depression as a as as, as just any other disease. Mm -hmm. It is actually a, mm -hmm. a very serious. illness that yeah. we should be talking about mm -hmm. now in Kenya talk about male mm -hmm. three out of a hundred are suffering from depression, depression. Uh -huh. youth mm -hmm. three out of a hundred are suffering from depression mm -hmm. we talk about female around 10 mm -hmm. out of a hundred wow. are suffering from depression mm -hmm. so you see this is a disease that we really need to talk about mm -hmm. around 42 percent mm -hmm. 42 percent of the of the adolescents mm -hmm. are suffering from depression wow. so you see this is a this is a is a is, is something that we, we need to come out mm -hmm. and talk about yes, it openly mm -hmm. so that uh, people can can be aware of mm -hmm. it and people can be able uh, to know how to solve it yes. and people can be able to know 
how to to tackle it in case it hits you or hits mm-hmm. someone who is who is close to you or, mm-hmm. or the next person mm-hmm. yeah so uh depression it's spreading very fast mm-hmm. and uh it's increasing every day mm-hmm. yes wow and uh, now i'm thinking like uh, at the moment there's so much that is happening in the social media yes. and they are among the root cause why the young people are going into depression yes. maybe you can just address uh this issue of uh, peer pressure as i think peer pressure is, is one of the causes of depression yes. currently as we talk among the young people yes. how can someone handle that to avoid getting into depression no social media is one of the factors that mm-hmm. are leading to to depression, depression. Yeah. because uh, uh number one thing okay social media is good yeah it there, is there is a uh, uh, pros mm-hmm. and cons of yes. social media now uh peer pressure is uh sometimes brought about by social media mm-hmm. so sometimes you you are you are you are there you are in your instagram and then you are scrolling and then you you see people of your age mm-hmm. they are very successful yes. they have maybe maybe uh, even sometimes you 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 went to school with them mm-hmm. and then they are very successful they have gotten a job and everything is going well for them mm-hmm. and then there is you yes there is you who is struggling in life mm-hmm. you barely even put a uh, uh, food on your table mm-hmm. so this really becomes a problem yes. and and you you start you start having issues mm-hmm. you start seeing yourself as a failure mm-hmm. in life mm-hmm. because you you feel now like uh what is what is so different from you from the other people true. yes and and it's a, it, it's good that people start uh looking themselves mm-hmm. as an individual mm-hmm. don't compare yourself because the moment you start comparing yourself mm-hmm. that is where you start getting into yeah. issues of depression yes peer pressure sometimes uh will bring issues uh with uh, mm-hmm. alcohol abuse mm-hmm. you start taking alcohol because mm-hmm. you see someone else is also taking alcohol so it, it 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 becomes like it's a fashion mm-hmm. so you see people taking alcohol you also want to take mm-hmm. the peer pressure and alcohol as we know it it is a, a depressant yes. so you you end up getting depressed depression. yes wow and how has depression affected uh academic because uh, i believe uh, i've seen even teenagers yes. who are undergoing through depression yes. and i believe uh, this is something that can affect their academic performance yes. how can that be addressed depression affects academic in a negative way mm. depression has various signs and symptoms mm-hmm. as we talked about yes. one of the signs and symptoms mm-hmm. is lack of concentration mm-hmm. because you see you might be talking to someone mm-hmm. you we, we, are, we are having a conversation yeah. and then we are talking we are talking and then all of a sudden you 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 look at me and you ask me what are you saying mm-hmm. you see that is lack of concentration these people sure. they cannot maintain concentration for time. you see uh-huh. so even in class that mm-hmm. is the same same thing happening mm-hmm. so this person the teacher is there is teaching or the, the lecturer or whoever is teaching mm-hmm. and then uh you are there you are absent minded mm-hmm. you are easily distracted yes. by by so many yes. things that are happening around you mm-hmm. so that is one of them so uh, at the end of the day you are you are your academic performance mm. it, it goes down sure. sometimes mm-hmm. uh depression brings about we talked about anhedonia mm-hmm. anhedonia is lack of interest in things that you used to do yes. you used to like people who used to like reading stories mm-hmm. people who used to like doing mathematics of mm-hmm. course we have our favorite subjects yes, yes. Like sure. so people will you are performing very well mm-hmm. now you start start declining mm-hmm. depression also brings about uh issues with uh, school dropouts mm-hmm. because remember you are depressed mm-hmm. you have no one to talk to mm-hmm. you feel like you're worthless mm-hmm. so these people they fall into drugs mm-hmm. so they, they they fail to go to school to take drugs mm-hmm. two ones they, they they run out of school when you don't go to school you don't perform the performance of course is going to be to be very low so it's worth saying that mm-hmm. depression affects academic performance mm-hmm. in a negative way sure yes and how has depression affected our social relationships yes social relationship now remember depression one of the the signs and symptoms mm-hmm. of depression mm-hmm. is a uh, social withdrawal mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. People isolate themselves. themselves. Mm-hmm. So if I if I isolate myself, mm. the social relationship is is cut. Mm-hmm. So there is no way we can have a, a, an interaction. Mm-hmm. We cannot interact. Yes. You see, mm-hmm. uh, depression sometimes bring about uh, violence. Mm-hmm. Some people. They, they are very angry. They, I don't want to, to, to associate with my, myself with mm-hmm. someone who is violent. Yeah, sure. So I will, I'll, I'll, I'll tend to isolate you. I'll stay away from mm-hmm. you. So you see, I've cut the, the social relationship. Mm-hmm. And also the family members. Are, are family members that used to stay together. Now you, you have started isolating yourself. Mm-hmm. You, start, you start feeling like you are now starting to become proud and mm-hmm. they sometimes you will not understand mm-hmm. what you are going through if you sure. if you are not that of a person mm-hmm. yes oh thank you so much that was so enlightening uh, my viewers you have had this so much to learn when it comes to depression and how to uh, handle the situation and how to deal with those who are around us who are suffering from depression we are going to take a very short break and when we are right back we are going to proceed with this interesting conversation don't go far uh, welcome back our viewer thank you so much for all the streaming in to bracket tv and enjoying our various programs my name is Maureen Boyani and you are here on your favorite spot, The Youth Nation. Today we are talking about depression and our guest on studio has really enlightened us when it comes to signs, what are the causes and all that. And now we want to look into depression can go to an extent of someone feeling suicidal yes. because of you have said I, depression is someone feeling hopeless, yes. uh, unworthy yes. and all that. Yes. And this might lead them to go uh, into suicide, right? Yes. So how are we able to pick that this person is in that extent that actually they want to commit suicide? Yes, there are various things that uh, you should be on the lookout mm-hmm. to know that this person is almost mm-hmm. committing suicide. Yeah. Now, one of the of the of the things that you you, you will see in these people, mm-hmm. most of them talk mostly of hopelessness. Mm-hmm. They talk about how they they have no hope. Uh-huh. They they talk about how uh, worthless they are. If you find someone who is talking uh, like that, mm. now this is a person who is at risk of at the verge uh-huh. of committing suicide. suicide. Uh-huh. The other thing, um, pers- a person who has family history mm-hmm. of people committing suicide. Mm-hmm. If maybe the the, the the parents committed suicide, mm-hmm. now this is a person who is at a higher risk of committing, committing suicide. suicide. Yeah. Even talking. Mm-hmm. Some people they say, "I will commit suicide." Mm. So this is something that you should take serious uh-huh. because let me say that suicide mm-hmm. it is a psychiatric emergency. Okay, it is a psychiatric emergency. Uh-huh. So uh, it it is something that should be taken very seriously. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have talked about hopelessness. Mm-hmm. We have talked about uh, people verbalizing they will commit suicide. Mm-hmm. The other thing we can talk about is people, they, they start putting their lives in order. Okay. Yes, you see someone uh, has called all the relatives, mm-hmm. uh, they, they have started talking, they have started sharing their wealth. Mm-hmm. That is one sign that this person, mm-hmm. where they are going, they, they are just preparing themselves to go. Mm-hmm. They, they, they are almost committing suicide. Okay. The other thing that uh, these people... You, you might look at a person who was very depressed. Mm-hmm. You're very depressed. They are very sad mm-hmm. and hopeless. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they just become happy. They are okay. okay. They are happy. Mm-hmm. Everything is just okay. Mm-hmm. These are the people who have made peace with themselves mm-hmm. and they are, they are ready. Mm-hmm. They are ready for anything. Mm-hmm. Now, someone who has a previous history mm-hmm. of committing suicide. Mm-hmm. Someone has ever tried to commit suicide mm-hmm. but survived. Yes. This is a person you should take very seriously mm-hmm. because if they tried, they are likely to try yes. it again uh-huh. because it's an illness. Mm-hmm. It's uh, uh, something they are going through. Mm-hmm. So um, that is uh, another sign that you might look for. The other thing, people will start uh, 
buying uh, weapons. Mm -hmm. People buying weapons. You see someone has, has bought a gun. Mm -hmm. Someone has bought a rope mm -hmm. and they don't have a cow. Yeah. They don't have a coat. <laughs> <laughs> but they have bought a, a, a rope. rope. Uh -huh. so, someone has bought a, maybe these are toxins. Mm -hmm. These are uh, things that you should be very careful with. Mm -hmm. Or maybe someone you find someone, you have, uh, this someone has been uh, given a prescription, mm -hmm. but you see they are not taking that medication. Yes. They are planning to take it all at once. Mm -hmm. They go going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that is one of the signs mm -hmm. that someone is almost committing suicide. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, they even, uh, you find someone googling mm -hmm. in the internet, they, they, they start Googling How ways of, of suicide. committing suicide. Okay. Yes, and, and also you find the articles that they are reading mm -hmm. or the movies that they are watching, mm -hmm. it is about suicide okay. or, or, or ways mm -hmm. of harming themselves. Mm -hmm. So suicide is a very uh, serious matter mm -hmm. that uh, should be taken seriously. If someone uh, says they are going to commit suicide, mm -hmm. this is someone that you want to be watch close to and, and mm -hmm. watch them 24 mm -hmm. hours mm -hmm. and, and make sure that there is uh, no things uh, mm -hmm. around them that mm -hmm. can that can harm them or they can use to harm themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you see, normally we say everyone fears death. Yes. How comes that this person does not uh, have mm -hmm. that in mind? Like they are not afraid of dying. Okay, that is a good question mm -hmm. because uh, sometimes you see these people they they, they feel they are worthless. Mm -hmm. They feel they, they feel like they have they have uh, nothing to offer. Yes, they have nothing to offer. Mm -hmm. And also, we talked about hallucinations. Mm -hmm. eh? Now they are auditory hallucinations. Mm -hmm. Now these auditory hallucinations, they are voices in their head okay. that is telling them, mm -hmm. "Kill yourself. Okay. You are worthless. Mm -hmm. You have failed in life. Mm -hmm. Look at people who are of your age. Mm -hmm. They have succeeded okay. in life, and you are you are still there. Mm -hmm. So." They, they are just voices in, in the head that mm -hmm. tells them. Go ahead. You see? Mm -hmm. So, or, or sometimes, not only, not only committing suicide, mm -hmm. they might also commit homicide. Okay. They, they, they kill another person. Uh -huh. yeah. Wow. So, what are the appropriate steps that we should take the moment uh, we start picking or realizing that this person is suicidal? Okay. Now, uh, the moment that you realize that someone is suicidal, mm -hmm. or maybe uh, you have caught someone in the act mm -hmm. of maybe trying to commit suicide. suicide yeah. Number one thing, you should make sure you yourself you are safe. Okay. Because you might not know, this person might even be violent. Mm -hmm. you, you try to restrict them, they mm -hmm. might, it might be violent. Yeah. Make sure you yourself you are safe. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, approach them with an open open mind and mm -hmm. open body. Mm -hmm. Make sure you can see them, you can see where they are likely to, to run mm -hmm. or make sure you yourself no there is a, you have you, an escape. Yes, you have an escape uh -huh. in, in case they decide to, mm -hmm. to, to, to maybe you. attack you. Mm -hmm. So the other thing, mm -hmm. if maybe they were trying to, to, to harm themselves, mm -hmm. call for help. Okay. Do, do not try to restrict the, them mm -hmm. without help. Mm -hmm. It's good to shout for help yeah. so that people can come in and help you mm -hmm. maybe to, to stop them from committing suicide. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you remove the equipments or the firearms that they wanted to, yes. to, to, use, them, to use them to harm themselves mm -hmm. because they can also use to harm you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that is, that is how, how you, what you should do. Mm -hmm. And also after doing that, you're supposed to contact the authorities. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, or or maybe if it's a relative, you take this person to the hospital mm -hmm. or for for a psychiatric review mm -hmm. because you might not know what is happening. Yeah. So it's good to 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 talk about them. Or, and and sometimes uh, you might even see a stranger mm -hmm. on the on, on the on the road mm -hmm. and they try to commit suicide. Yes. So uh, you're supposed to contact the the authorities, mm -hmm. maybe the police mm -hmm. or maybe the chief someone who is on authority yeah. so that they can maybe be taken to a mental health facility mm -hmm. for maybe um, admission procedures mm -hmm. to be initiated. Great. Uh, what are the long-term uh, factors of uh, untreated depression? Now, depression mm -hmm. is treatable. Oh, yes. Depression is treatable. Mm -hmm. 
uh, although it might take uh, long and uh, also expensive mm-hmm. and also takes a lot of energy, mm-hmm. it is treatable. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, if depression is not treated, yes. it may result to various uh, things that mm-hmm. are not very pleasant. Mm-hmm. Now, for example, uh, we have talked of suicide. Mm-hmm. Some a suicide it is as a result of untreated depression. Mm-hmm. If if you are not if if someone is not able to identify mm-hmm. that they are suffering from depression, yeah. they are likely to commit suicide. Mm-hmm. The other one is about uh, people might fall into drug abuse. Okay. Because they are depressed, so they they take so because they don't want to think about other things mm-hmm. or things that are stressing them. Mm-hmm. So they they tend to fall into drug mm-hmm. uh, use yeah. violence people become violent mm-hmm. because they, they have depression and it is not treated mm-hmm. so they start developing uh, uh, they become uh, violent, they become violent. Mm-hmm. other thing is about uh, maybe uh, physical symptoms if depression is not treated mm-hmm. no imagine you are the, a person is there they are not moving they are uh, sluggish mm-hmm. but they are eating Remember, they, they are eating, stress eating. Yes. So, this person grows very, uh, very, yeah, very fat. They, they are not, they are not exercising. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, they, they, they start developing physical problems mm-hmm. like, uh, maybe heart problems. Mm-hmm. You see, mm-hmm. because, uh, they, they, there's a lot of fats in their, in their body. True. So, they develop, uh, physical problems. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, they, they can also even have, uh, insomnia. And also the the, the, the eating disorder, mm-hmm. yes. So these are long term effects of depression. depression. Yes. Ah, okay. I know uh, depression presents itself different yes. among the young people, yes, and even among the adults. Yes. What is the difference? No, um, there are no so many differences. Mm-hmm. But you see, when when we are looking at. Uh, at a depression, mm-hmm. we, we, we want to put, put the picture is in our minds. Mm-hmm. We want to look at someone who is gloomy, mm-hmm. they are very sad. Yeah. Yeah. But in the reality, mm-hmm. that is not the case, especially in adults. Okay. Adults, they know they, they, they are very good in masking. Mm-hmm. So someone is going through issues and, and is under a lot of pressure, but mm-hmm. when you meet them, they're they're very, smiley. all smiley. Mm-hmm. They are very talkative. Cool, calm and collected. Yes, they, they know how to mask it very uh-huh. well. But when it comes to maybe young adults or even adolescents, mm-hmm. they might not know how to mask it mm-hmm. uh, very well. So yes. you are likely to to notice it. Mm-hmm. But you see, again, the young people they are out there mm-hmm. doing doing things and discovering. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the adults mm-hmm. they are not around. So if these people. You see, you see the parents, they are working a lot. Yes. Eh? They are mm. out there working mm. and, and careers and everything. And this person is in the house all alone. Mm. They might not, the, the parent might not even notice mm-hmm. that this person is undergoing through depression. Mm-hmm. So this person, uh, the young people might present with academic uh, performance, mm-hmm. which is very low mm-hmm. because, because this person is depressed. Yeah. What are the available uh, treatments that are there for people that are uh, in depression? Okay. There are various ways to tackle depression. Mm-hmm. Depression, uh, number one of the ways through which you can tackle depression, mm-hmm. number one is psychotherapy. Okay. Now, psychotherapy is divided into two. It can be done individually mm-hmm. or it can be done as a group. Okay. Whereby people come uh, come together mm-hmm. and they, they discuss things mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. So the, the people who are undergoing depression, mm-hmm. they come together and they talk about things. Uh, the social groups. Yes, uh-huh. the social group. Mm-hmm. So that is one way through which you can tackle depression. depression. The other way, uh, there are things we do, uh, we call psychodramas. Mm-hmm. A psychodrama is when uh, the mentally ill people, mm-hmm. uh, we, uh, including the depressed people, mm-hmm. they try imitating. They imitate things mm-hmm. that are done by by people who are not suffering. The other one we call uh, psychopharmacology. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is whereby we use the antidepressant. Mm-hmm. We also use the antidepressant like the tricyclic antidepressant mm-hmm. or mono, monoamine uh, uh, oxidase. 
Uh, we can also talk about serotonin, uh, reuptake uh, inhibitors. Mm -hmm. So these are, are some of the antidepressants. You can talk of antipsychotics, mm -hmm. uh, haloperidol and, and, and olanzepine. Mm -hmm. So these are drugs through uh, which you can use mm -hmm. to, to maybe boost the uh, mood like carbamazepine mm -hmm. or maybe uh, alleviate or remove those psychotic ideations, mm -hmm. maybe like the delusions in there hallucinations mm -hmm. yeah so that is one way of treating depression mm -hmm. the other one is cognitive behavioral therapy mm -hmm. whereby you have uh, this psychologist is seated here and mm -hmm. then you are seated there mm -hmm. and then you are having a conversation, a conversation. Mm -hmm. yes oh now uh i'm thinking of someone who is out here watching us and uh, they are not sure exactly when do you see the doctor because they say, so not sure what one attack on a semanga can the corner doctor says on Mexico Leo Azimu point. But yes. that is not the case from the way you have uh, told us because even having a uh, eating disorder, yes. sleeping disorder, that is a sign of a uh, depression. Yes. But uh there's someone who doesn't think that is really a good idea just yes. because you are having eating disorders. That you need to go to the doctor. Yes. Can you encourage someone out here tonight how important it is to seek medical attention? So um, it is very important mm. to seek medical attention, especially when you feel like you are depressed. You know, you'd rather you'd rather go to the hospital mm -hmm. and then they tell you go back, you are okay. Yeah. Instead of you staying with the problem mm -hmm. and then it becomes now it is untreated depression, mm -hmm. which one is uh, the one that is going to lead to suicidal ideations. Mm -hmm. So it is very important to, to seek medical attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the reasons why people fail to seek medical attention mm -hmm. is stigmatization. Exactly. Because, and, and stigmatization has not started today. Mm -hmm. It is started long time ago yeah, because me mentally ill people a long time ago, mm -hmm. others were caged. Others were put into deep holes. Mm. Others were sent into the into the forest, yes. and every others were chained. Mm. So we have come a long way, mm -hmm. but estigmatization has not started today. Mm -hmm. So it's about it's about time that we start uh, regarding uh, mental illness mm. and especially depression as a disease, just like any, any other. other. Yeah. Yes, because uh, stigmatization and victimiz victimization is not a very a uh, good way to encourage these mm. people who are maybe undergoing and by the way there are no vaccine for there's no vaccine <laughs> for mental illness or <laughs> depression so anybody can get depressed it is true. yes so uh the moment you start victimizing someone mm. it, it it really becomes a problem because you might also even get mm -hmm. get depressed, depressed yourself well. um. yeah so if you are there you are feeling depressed mm -hmm. There are, there, are, there are things that you are going, uh, you are undergoing through. Mm -hmm. It's very important for you to seek mental health. Mm -hmm. Go to the, to, to that hospital, mm -hmm. uh, seek me mental health. You would rather be told to go back home. Yeah. Because, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let me add that stigmatization is, 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 is really bad mm -hmm. because, uh, for example, you are talking to someone and then, and then, or, or you hear people talking. They, they are talking about you and mm. then they say who you are gonna fight look on my life you see it, it really yeah. becomes very <laughs> you feel really bad i know yes you feel really <laughs> bad because it, it's not like it's you wanted to, yeah. to get depressed mm. yes yes maybe uh we can talk to parents teachers and caregivers out here how can they support the especially young people yes. who are undergoing depression the mm. main part of tackling depression mm -hmm. is talking mm -hmm. and that relationship mm -hmm. the, the relationship between the care and yeah. the relationship between the parents mm -hmm. and also the, the relationship between the the, the mm -hmm. those people the parents and the caregivers mm -hmm. with the young with the young people mm -hmm. because now uh you need to create a, a solid relationship mm -hmm. and make make that young person mm -hmm. feel that they are comfortable mm -hmm. talking to you mm -hmm. so that is one way of, of making sure that this young person mm -hmm. is not going to fall into depression. Sure. And even if they fall into depression, mm -hmm. you're going to be the first one to notice yeah, because they are able to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Now, the other way is, is reducing bullying, mm -hmm. especially in school. There are a lot of bullying that happens in school. Mm -hmm. Example, there are types of bullying. Mm -hmm. They are physical bullying, mm -hmm. 
person may push you mm. or or, uh, or or pinch you or maybe slap you. Mm. That is physical, physical bullying. Yeah. Uh, there is a uh, social bullying. Mm -hmm. People people will start spreading rumors about you mm -hmm. out there. They even start in, if, if for example you you are not working very well. They start mm -hmm. imitating how you work. Yeah. So that is a lot of uh, bullying. Mm -hmm. There is also verbal bullying where mm -hmm. people abuse you and they tell you things that that are hurting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so there are a lot of bullying, cyber bullying. Mm -hmm because uh this one happens in internet social yeah. media mm -hmm. yes so these are a, a lot of bullying and parents and, and caregivers and also the, mm -hmm. the teachers they might help the young people mm -hmm. through through identifying those bullies yeah. and also putting measures mm -hmm. in school mm -hmm. uh for anti-bullying okay. so that people might and also be on the lookout mm -hmm. because these young people who are undergoing depression, mm -hmm. they, they, they tend to, to go into drugs. True. And drug, mm -hmm. uh, especially alcohol, it, 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 it worsens the situation. Mm -hmm. So as a parent, it's very good to create a youth-friendly mm -hmm. environment mm -hmm. for you to be able to pull that young person closer, closer. to you. Mm -hmm. And don't be so hard mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be so judgmental. Some parents or some caregivers, yeah. they are they are too judgmental. Mm -hmm. Why did you do this? Yes. Why were you not thinking? Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. so it is it is very important to understand these mm -hmm. young because they are go undergoing through a lot. There is a sure. lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also, remove some stressors if it is possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, if if it's possible for you to remove the stresses that these people are undergoing through, mm -hmm. unnecessary stress. I mean, it's 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 good to remove it. Mm -hmm. Yes, those are various ways through which you can. Uh, a parent can can help this young person mm -hmm. to cope with depression. How do you think they are preventive measures, or how can we reduce the risk of getting into depression among young people? Exactly what we have talked about. Mm -hmm. You see, those those are the same same measures mm -hmm. that you are going to put if you want to reduce these risks. Yes, maybe to to reduce them mm -hmm. because maybe the moment you foster that relationship mm -hmm. with the with with a young person, mm -hmm. this person is not likely to go into depression Just because so. you, you you they will be able to talk to you, mm -hmm. they'll be able to talk to the caregiver, they'll be able to to talk to other, other people yeah. who are who can help them. Mm -hmm. Also, exercise exercise is a very important uh, aspect when mm -hmm. it comes to depression. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment you run, mm -hmm. there are chemicals that are being produced by, the, by your body mm -hmm. uh, called endorphins. Mm -hmm. Now. Endorphins. You see, now when you are stressed, mm -hmm. your body produces a hormone called cortisol. Mm -hmm. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Okay. Now, when you are exercising, exercising you you produce endorphins. Mm -hmm. Now, these endorphins they suppress the the cortisol mm -hmm. hormone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, great. Uh, how do you think uh, we can do our institution, our country, the government can increase uh, the education when it comes to uh, mental uh, illnesses awareness that can help them people how can we improve now, our spread of the awareness okay now uh i think one of the ways through which we can improve uh, uh mental uh, mental health awareness mm -hmm. is uh mass education mm -hmm. like in the communities you want people to to talk openly mm -hmm. you you want them to create a forum mm -hmm. where people can talk openly about yeah. mental illness mm -hmm. and then what they don't know, there yeah, are okay. trained people who mm -hmm. are ready to to give them that information. Mm -hmm. It's also very important mm -hmm. that uh, the government uh, ensure that uh, that uh, there are ready psychiatrists ready to to, to help, to help uh, these these mental mm -hmm. ill people or or those people who are undergoing mm -hmm. uh, depression. Also, by the way, treating depression or mm -hmm. treating a mental illness is very expensive those mm -hmm. medications are so expensive mm -hmm. so it is if the government can subsidize this this the this, this treatment mm -hmm. you might find that so many people are now starting to come out mm -hmm. to go and get the the, 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 the treatment mm -hmm. yeah so awareness is a first step mm -hmm. when 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 you want to eradicate this illness depression. because uh once once a person is aware of the symptoms mm -hmm. or, or maybe signs and symptoms and the causative uh, 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 things mm -hmm. they are able to avoid mm -hmm. and if they have the signs and symptoms mm -hmm. they are able to seek 
help yes. uh, in uh, in the appropriate time mm-hmm. before she goes to untreated depression. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's good to, to create awareness mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, I think the government should create the centers mm-hmm. and uh, where 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 free centers where mm-hmm. if I feel like I I have a problem with my mental health mm-hmm. I might go and talk to someone. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, do you think there are specific challenges that or barriers that can hinder the treatment uh, of depression, especially the young people? Yes, uh, there, are, there are various hindrances mm-hmm. to treatment of uh, depression. Mm-hmm. One of the hindrances mm-hmm. is even knowing that you are depressed. Absolutely. Yes, even mm-hmm. knowing that you are depressed is a problem. So yes. you see, you cannot even seek mm-hmm. treatment. Yeah. yeah. Some people, yes, they know they are depressed, mm-hmm. but they, they don't regard depression <laughs> as, 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 as an illness. <laughs> it an is illness. not worth going it's, to hospital. You cannot go to the hospital. Uh-huh. So some some will not even seek that medical uh, attention. Medical attention. Uh-huh. Yeah, so um, the other one is about uh, the expense. Uh-huh. You see, you see uh, just like we have talked about, we have said that this medication is very expensive. Uh-huh. Treating these mental ill people, uh-huh. it is very expensive. expensive. So some may even just leave them in the house or they lock them up or mm-hmm. they just let them wander on the street, on the street mm-hmm. which is which is not very good because mm-hmm. it de- predisposes them to many other problems the other problem or mm-hmm. the other hindrance to to treatment mm-hmm. is uh is diagnosing mm-hmm. so you see for you to, to diagnose this patient you need you need concrete information by the way uh, you might bring a patient mm-hmm. to the, a mental hospital mm-hmm. and they say you are the one who is sick. Even, not even the one I'm bringing in. <laughs> you see, it's you and the, and the patient uh-huh. and then you come and then they say you are the one who is sick. And sick. then you say you are the one who is sick. <laughs> you see, sometimes we mm-hmm. might end up locking you up. Instead of, Instead the, of patient, the other patient. person that I brought in. <laughs> Wow. So you see, it's usually a problem uh-huh. because you need to to observe this patient uh-huh. and make sure that this person is the one who is sick <laughs> and this one is okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So, uh, the other problem uh-huh. is about the extra pyramidal side effects. Uh-huh. Treating uh, uh, these mental illnesses, uh-huh. including depression, uh, we use drugs. Yes. And of course, drugs they have those side effects mm. and these side effects might not be very good when it comes especially to the young person mm-hmm. because uh, it affects various aspects of, of yeah, their lives yeah. because they may have uh, uh, sexual disorders mm-hmm. because of the of the of the medication mm-hmm. they may they may have a uh, parkinsonism mm-hmm. they, they are various side effects mm-hmm. oculogenic crisis uh, tardive dyskinesia. There mm-hmm. are so many of them mm-hmm. that are, and that is why we give them uh, uh, various uh, medication, okay. anti Parkinsonism. Mm-hmm. Maybe an example, trihexamphenidine. You 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 give them to counteract the effects mm-hmm. of of the drugs. Of, of, of the drugs. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, uh, do you think there are uh, community or uh, resources like the social groups? That are there to help these kind of people who are in depression. Yes, there are uh, there are those uh, social groups. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them are are private, and others are from the government. Mm-hmm. Uh, an example is Befrienders. Mm-hmm. Befrienders is an organization mm-hmm. that uh, that uh, help people to cope with depression. Okay. The other one is uh, uh, an organization called Still a Mom. Mm-hmm. So this is an organization mm-hmm. that helps those couples that maybe maybe they got a miscarriage mm-hmm. you see mm-hmm. or maybe they're still bad mm-hmm. you see they are undergoing a lot of yeah. a lot of a lot of depression mm-hmm. they feel so bad a lot of sadness and mm-hmm. hopelessness so this organization it helps them to to deal with with the, with the issue of mm-hmm. depression mm-hmm. the other one is a uh, is an organization called uh Niskize. Mm-hmm. so Niskize is a uh, these, these are uh, 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 an organization that is usually uh, all there 24 hours. Mm-hmm. If you are having any any problem or maybe suicidal ideation mm-hmm. or depression, you might even give them a call uh-huh. and then they talk you down. Mm-hmm. There is an application mm-hmm. you can download uh, on a Play Store mm-hmm. called Card. Okay. Now this application, mm-hmm. it helps you, especially those people who have sleep disturbances. Mm-hmm. 
it helps you to to calm down mm -hmm. to sleep just like from the word itself mm -hmm. calm. calm yes it helps you to calm down maybe you breathe mm -hmm. yes and also maybe find some sleep right. there is also another one called uh, oasis kenya mm -hmm. you can uh, get help from there mm -hmm. uh, another one called uh, there's a there's a facebook page mm -hmm called uh, Depression and Anxiety Group Kenya. Mm -hmm. it, it is a very interesting uh, a page on Facebook yes. that it has various various information mm -hmm. and, and people who are, are undergoing through those depression and they are able to talk openly, mm -hmm. they are able on a daily basis, mm -hmm. they are able to, to talk and chat. Mm -hmm. yes, so those are some of the social organizations mm -hmm. that people can find help. Support. Yes. Great. Even as we come to a close, I just want you to give our viewer your parting shots. I would like to say that uh, life is full of challenges. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that are happening mm -hmm. uh, to, 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 to especially the young people. Yes. And I would, I would like to, to conclude uh, by saying mm -hmm. when, when people throw stones at you, mm -hmm. you, you are supposed to pick those stones and build yourself a wall. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you, you build yourself a, a wall, a bigger wall, such that next time they throw that stone, mm -hmm. it's not even going to pass <laughs> and reach you. Yeah. Yes, once upon a time, there was this farmer mm -hmm. who had a, a donkey. Mm -hmm. Now, this, uh, this farmer loved the donkey so much. Mm -hmm. So, uh, at some point, this donkey fell into a pit. Yeah. Yes, so it fell into a pit and now the farmer was very depressed and mm -hmm. feeling, you oh, know, how am I going to get this, this donkey yeah. from the pit? Mm -hmm. So at some point, the farmer gave up and mm -hmm. said, called the workers and they started throwing Stones. soils in the, in the, in, in the pit, mm -hmm. maybe to bury the donkey. Mm -hmm. But you see, the moment they, they started throwing the soil, mm -hmm. uh, the donkey started, uh, stopped, no sound, mm -hmm. nothing. The donkey was just there. So they, they drew, they drew the soil, they drew the soil. At some point they realized, this is a donkey. Uh, they just the looking, ground. It's, all, it's almost uh, on the ground. Uh -huh. So the donkey was just shaking, shaking off. off the dust and, mm -hmm. and stepping on it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes life is not easy mm -hmm. and there are going to be challenges. Sure. The, the most important thing is to, to, to seek help. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Yeah. My viewer, as you have heard, help is always available if you're out there if you know someone who has this kind of particular symptoms that we have talked about just be uh, helpful and just hold their hands and take them to the uh, right places where they're going to get help and of course because we know that we are um, children of god and we have a father in heaven you can always pray for these people and i know they're going to receive their healing i'm so delighted that you're able to stick with us through uh, this episode tonight and I believe that you have gotten your two cents as always. Until next Saturday, keep it for TV. I've been your host, Maureen Boyan. See you.